Your A's, get your A's, your boy Ty back here with another video, and in this video today, guys, we're going to be detail, going over and talking about each and every one of the new Encore cards today, as well as the Invincible cards. Briefly talking about KD, if you want a whole KD breakdown, what I think about the end games as well in general, that is going to be in a separate video, so make sure to go and check that one out as well after this one. And I really do appreciate all your recent support. It has been absolutely crazy. So thank each and every one of you guys. Let's start uh, at the bottom right, okay? Because I see Rondo down there. And like always, 2K has to put in pack fillers. Now, what are pack fillers? Well, it's basically when you see the dark matter glow, cards that are going to be flying out of packs. Those cards come tomorrow. Rajon, our Rajon Rondo, number one. He's going to be probably the most pulled. And number two, Kyrie Irving. Uh, do you guys remember when I used to do pack odds videos and talk about, well, these guys are way more pulled than other guys? It's the same thing here. With Kyrie Irving, with Ray Rajon Rondo, they are going to be pulled a ton. Both cards are going to have absolutely stink. Okay, Rondo is six six foot one, going to do nothing on the court. Kyrie Irving is six foot three, has horrible sigs. We'll see if they update him, but just know both those cards are going to be absolutely horrible. If you're like a big Kyrie Irving stan, again, do what you guys have to do. But at the end of the day, no, he is absolutely horrible. Then let's talk about Kyle Korver, okay? He's the next Encore card. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't love the Korver base this year, okay? It's the base they gave Braun. And a lot of you guys probably are going to agree that LeBron James release is just meh, right? It's not necessarily horrible. It's just meh. And that's going to be the same thing for Kyle Korver. Korver's only 6'7", probably not going to do a lot of other things on the court for you, especially productive things. Am I saying the card's horrible? No. Like, you can use Korver, have some success with this, uh, some success with them, and do what you got to do. Again, you're going to be able to green shots for you. You're going to have a 99 three ball. But outside of that, not going to do much for you. Then we get to Scotty Barnes, who I'm going to talk a little bit about Scotty Barnes here for a second, because he can play the point guard position. Now, if you go to 2K23, you search Scotty Barnes. The last Scotty Barnes we had could play a point guard. 6'8", good player model, good player build as well. What is the problem with Scotty Barnes? Well, the problem is I don't necessarily love this Scotty Barnes base. Could they change it? Yes, I do believe that's a release that is up for change. We'll see what they do with it. Other than that, give him good dribble six. Again, he's six eight. The height is there. It's just going to come down to if they change his six and his release. He has France's size up. Give him the Asta slide. Change that release. And Scotty Barnes could be an absolutely incredible budget point guard in my team. In a game in which I think we're to the point, we need good and better budget cards in my team. I just don't think there's that many great budget cards in my team that people can use and have fun with. Scotty Barnes is one that I'm definitely a fan of. LaMarcus Aldridge up next. Let's talk about LaMarcus Aldridge, what he's going to provide for you. Release, meh. I mean, it's LaMarcus Aldridge. Release is definitely mid-mediocre, only 6'11 at the power forward position. And I say only because, again, people are going to be running Taco. People are going to be running Manute. You see this new Invincible KP? Yes, people are going to be running him. So that's the problem with LaMarcus Aldridge. And why would you run LaMarcus Aldridge when you can get the free Invincible Jokic? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can get free Invincible Jokic, who is better than LaMarcus Aldridge, there's just no re real reason to run LA. I guess I'm intrigued if they change his release or what the card could be like. But again, at only 6'11", the the, the the ceiling is pretty low, right? For how good he can be, right? I, I, now, it's not a card you can even say the floor is high with because I don't think he's going to be very good. Carl Malone, our first card tomorrow that we're going to get that I would say I'm somewhat excited about. Why? 6'9", 7-foot wingspan, but he can play the three. That's important, right? His player build's wide, it's good, and he can play the three, okay? Outside of that, Carl Malone normally in my team is pretty decent, right? He normally has an okay release, normally plays good defense, right? He's normally not just a garbage man that you throw on the court. The Carl Malone base on very quick is not horrible. Again, Probably not going to see a change release. I wish it would. Normal leaner. Could get, you know, the Asta slide. Could get some better dribble sticks in there. But he's going to be a decent three. He's going to have a decent three ball. Obviously, defensively, is going to be an absolute menace. You talk about top on-ball defenders, right? If you want a guy to guard KD, you want a guy to guard T-Mac, you want a guy to guard like a Tim Thomas, I think Carl Malone is going to be up there with the best of them. Problem is, is he going to be as good as like a Thurl Bailey? Probably not. And that's the real big issue for him. Already talked about Kyrie Irving. Let's talk about Mark Eaton up next, who I am ecstatic for. Not just excited. 
I am ecstatic for Mark Eden. Because I love the last pink diamond, Mark Eden. Now we're getting a Mark Eden that has 35 Hall of Famers, at least because he's a dark matter. Forget his stats. Forget everything else. He's going to have at least 35 Hall of Famers. Probably some more defensive edges as well. Is he going to have a three ball? I don't know. I'm guessing so. Because a Galaxy Opal Rudy Gobert the other day got a three ball. So why would they not give Mark Eaton a three ball? They give Mark Eaton a three ball. Again, I don't know about his release. I don't think it's great. But they give him a three ball. This car is going to be it in my team. I don't care. Seven, four, seven, seven weeks, man. They're going to give him a three ball. You want a budget big in my team. Mark Eaton, Mark Eaton might be my no go to, right? Think about like a Ralph Sampson type card. That's basically what Mark Eaton's going to be. You want to talk about a card we got last week that I think is going to be very comparable to Mark Eaton. That is Ralph Sampson, a card that can basically do it all on the court with those 35 Hall of Fame badges. Again, I don't think Mark Eaton's going to be to the level of Yao, to the level of Taco Manu. But for a dark matter, I think he's going to be absolutely elite. Last but certainly not least, we got to talk about Rudy before we get into the Invincibles. I love Rudy cards in my team. I always have. I always will. The Rudy needs to be on very quick, though. Enough of this quick thing, right? I mean, the Rudy base on quick, it's easy to time. It is, again, just a little bit slow. Rudy on very quick should be smooth. We'll see what they do with the leaner. I, I honestly think they might keep the pro leaner. I don't hate the pro leaner. I know there's a lot of people out there that really dislike the pro leaner. That's not me. MJ Drip style, Kobe size, up, escape with the John Wall movement, step back. I always love Rudy cards, and my team finally can play that small four position. If he gets better dribble six, again, he's going to need nearly perfect dribble six. He could be absolutely incredible for his value. Problem is, we got shooting guard AK last week, and, and that's kind of high expectations for the card. Let's talk about the Invincible, starting with who I think is going to be the worst one, Russell Westbrook. There's only a certain limit to how good you can make big Russ. 6'3", six, 6'7", six, wingspan. Again, this card, you could make the case, was basically an invincible. And honestly, I would tend to agree with you. Basically an invincible for Russ on very quick. Pretty good dribble six in there. Russ is going to have, you know, great dunking animations, right? He's going to dunk on everybody. The problem with Russ lies is he's not going to be able to guard anybody. Even if they give him a better release, anything like that, there's still just a limit to how good Russell Westbrook can be because he is only 6'3", and it's not like he's got, you know, KPJ on him. I mean, they could give him KPJ, I guess. But that's still not going to do it for Russell Westbrook. Kawhi Leonard up next, Invincible. I promise you, if they do not change the Kawhi Leonard base, I'm going to be so stunned. I'm not even saying you got to give him. I'm not saying KPG. I'm not saying anything. Give him the Neesmith base. I don't care. Give him a base that's just a little better than it is. You can give Joakim Noah a good base, the Kawhi base of old, but you can't put it on Kawhi, right? Give him the Christian Wood base. I, we're not asking for him to have KPJ. We're asking for Kawhi to get his old release back. And if he can't do that, I don't know what else to say to 2K. Because he deserves a good release. We went the whole year without a good Kawhi. We deserve it. Hopefully he gets a better release. You give him a good release, small forward shooting guard, he's still not going to be the best shooting guard in the game. Probably, but he's at least going to be usable. One of the best defensive cards in the entire game. And it will, again, just be fun to be able to use a Kawhi Leonard card in my team. If they do make his release good and updated Drupal 6 good release, Kawhi could be one of the top shooting guards in the entire game. Probably not as good as KD, but he definitely could be up there at that shooting guard position. Next up, Invincible Jason Tatum. I don't know where to even start with Jason Tatum. Does he need a new release? I mean, I don't know, kind of. Because here's the whole thing with JT. His release isn't going to be quick no matter what. You could put JT's release on very quick, and it's really not going to matter a whole ton. It will a little bit, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. His leaner stinks as well, needs a whole new dribble style. There's not many players that need a bigger bump than JT. We'll see what he does come with tomorrow. Obviously, only 6'8 at the 3. He's really limited for how good his ceiling is, right? Because only 6'8 at the 3. When you have Bobo, when you have even a guy like AK we got last week, that's basically an invincible card. It's hard to really hype up Jason Tatum too much. Last invincible today is Chris Stapp's Porzingis, right? Here's the deal. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. If they're going to put KD in, if you can buy KD outright or not, that will be interesting. If KD is able to be bought for $50, I'll be absolutely surprised. Guessing they're just going to stick with the Invincibles. And if you do want to spend money on an Invincible tomorrow, I'm telling you, spend it on Chris Stapp's Porzingis. He's by far and away the best Invincible, as long as Kawhi is not just him. KP Invincible, which basically means he's going to go from this one having 
48 total badges over the 39 Hall of Fame to having 55 base badges. So even badges like, you know, Quick First Step Clamp Breaker, right? Those are probably going to be on Hall of Fame. Menace Clamps, probably on Hall of Fame. Still going to have a great release. Probably even updated better Dribble Sigs for KP which he doesn't really need. The card's 7-3. He's going to do enough in the pick and pop game at 7-3 to hold it down for you. Even if you, you know, run him at power forward and he's not like a focal point of your offense, he is still going to do enough with his release on the court to be played. I love KP. And again, if you don't have Manute, if you don't have Yao, if you don't have all those guys and you just want to hoop with KP, he's going to be able to compete with those guys at 7-3 at an Invincible. Better than Shaq. Better than a guy even like Kareem. You're using Kareem. I expect KP to be just a better version of what Kareem is in general. Again, KD. Again, who knows what his release is going to be like. What they're going to give him. Probably going to be up there. Probably at least top three minimum at that shooting guard position. For a full KD breakdown, make sure to go check out my other video that I already have uploaded. That's going to wrap it up for our new Encore cards in NBA 2K23. My team, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.